Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Burnt River Ranch. I wanted to do an update video for you guys because I'm a little behind on making videos. Why are you crying, owl? It's my white kitty. Very friendly. Anyways, yeah, it's been a while since I've made an update video and I have a big one to make. We've had a lot of stuff going on on the farm this spring and we've been super, super busy with a whole bunch of different projects. So, uh, yeah, I'll just go into it and get you guys the details. I'm just gonna feed the pigs here first, otherwise they're gonna be screaming this entire video. So I'll get that done first. those guys are fed now I'm just gonna go feed my Jersey cow her grain this morning and then I will show you guys around and tell you what we've been up to you hungry are you hungry She's still shedding her winter coat. And this is Phoebe. If you remember Phoebe, she was just a little thing. She's not even three months old yet, and she's a little massive baby. Hey, you get so big. Aren't ya? Hey, you growing good on mama's milk? Alrighty, so let's get into it. Apologize for my hairdo, it's beautiful. Anyway, um, so we had some issues, if you watched one of our previous videos, we had some issues with our bore, our replacement bore, and then some issues with AI. Unfortunately, all of those issues were not able to be resolved, so we ended up purchasing a new boar, a mature boar that's ready for breeding. So I'll show you guys him. All right, so this is our new guy. This is Jimmy. Um, he is a one-year-old Hereford boar. So he is our, our new herd sire for now. And we're hoping that everything works out with him. Unfortunately, with the way breeding season has went now, um, we're getting pretty late into the year for breeding piglets, so with having all of our sows, we've just kind of accepted the fact that we're going to have a, a fairly big loss with keeping back these open sows and gilts that aren't pregnant for another almost year until we can breed them in the fall and have babies again in the spring. So we've decided to just keep them around and breed them in, in the fall and have spring piglets again and hopefully we can get going better for next year. But anyways, yeah, this is Jimmy. Um, when we got him, we still had our other boar pioneer, the one that we had hoped would work out. We still had him in this pen here that these sows are in. And we had brought Jimmy up this alleyway it was actually funny when we got him. He was the easiest loading pig I've ever come across in my life. So he just walked right up the driveway where we got him from and loaded right in the trailer, piece of cake. Like we should have bought a lottery ticket after that because that's not how pigs load. Usually they're most the most frustrating creature on the earth. But anyways, he loaded up super, super nice. He was calm, friendly, quiet, whatever. But when we got him home here, and it was a new environment, we're new people, we had all these sows in here, and we had that boar over here, there was a lot of hormones 
and a lot of commotion going on and yeah so he was very riled up and got pretty aggressive and I'll show you guys actually um, so we had got him in this alleyway and he was kind of fence fighting here with the boar there were sows here some of them were in heat so there's a lot of stuff going on anyways he ended up uh, biting me and taking a pretty good chunk out of my leg so that was not fun and we were kind of friends off for a while and, and I don't really trust any pig never will but yeah it's just a good reminder that you need to be careful and safe around these guys because they're big animals and they can be very unpredictable so yeah what happened was he was fighting with the boar in this pen I went to go close the gate when he went in there and he was facing the other way and when I went to close it it touched his butt and he just whipped around and got me real quick I think he thought I was the other boar getting him from behind and he quit right away as soon as he saw it was me but still it was scary and it was not fun so I'm still actually healing up from that but yeah, he's calmed down a lot and settled down a lot now that we've gotten rid of that other boar. And I'll make another video about that situation too, because there's more to talk about. But so far, he has bred two gilts. So they will be having fall litters. They're kind of our test run to see if he's a good boar or not, if he can do his job. And I also didn't want to have a whole bunch of piglets in the fall because... My worst fear is to be stuck with a whole bunch of pigs to feed over the winter because they don't sell very good in the fall because lots of people don't want to house and raise piglets and stuff over the winter. They want to have them butchered in the fall, which I don't necessarily agree with that opinion because I think that there's lots of pros to raising pigs over the winter versus in the summer, um, but that's a whole other topic. So we won't get into that today, but yeah, so that's kind of where we're at with the pigs right now. So we've got a couple girls that will be due end of August, early September with babies, and hopefully that all works out. And if you saw in that last clip, I have one Hereford sow that's kind of missing some hair. Um, I don't know what her deal is, if she's got lice or what, but she's like on round three of being dewormed, so hopefully that takes care of it. Anyways, I have another really big update for you guys. So one thing that my husband's been working on, and I've been helping him as I can, um, but mostly he's been doing it, is we are actually building a brand new farrowing barn. So I'll show you that. Alright, so it's still a work in progress. It's not finished yet, but this is going to be our new farrowing barn where we have baby pigs. And I'm very excited to get to use it. So it's a nice size barn that we can use. It should be a lot easier and make things a lot more efficient for us. Um, <clears throat> we are currently set up to farrow at max three sows at a time. And even at that, it's... Um, the way we have it set up is definitely not ideal. So we have this barn here. Um, it's all wired already. We've got power to it. So we've got a nice little outside light here. And I'll show you guys the inside. It's like I said, not done yet, but I'll give you guys an idea of what's going on. So we've got two doors. We got the window in. And I'll show you guys around, okay? So we're gonna have stalls on this side where this door is and this door is, is gonna be an alleyway. Obviously we still have yet to build the doors. Um, and then we're gonna have stalls on this side as well. I'm hoping that we can get six stalls in here for farrowing. So we can have all the ladies in here at once farrowing in this barn. It's gonna be nice because I can now stand up in here. I can see what I'm doing. It's gonna be a lot safer for us and it's going to be a lot better for this house. Yeah, so I'm hoping that if we can get six stalls in here, we should have some room left over here to have a stanchion for my milk cow. And everything's all wired up in here. We've got lots of plug-ins, lots of outlets. We've got lights in here. So we'll be able to plug in heat lamps for the baby pigs. And hopefully in the future, if we decide to get a milk machine, we can also use that plug-in to plug it in. But yeah, so that's kind of our new barn. And it's not done yet, but it's coming along. 
it's going to be super nice to have this in the winter and eliminate some of our issues with uh, crushing and losing piglets and getting chilled piglets and all that. Be able to keep it nice and warm and cozy in there for those guys. So, yeah. So that's probably one of our bigger projects of the year that we are working on. And it's coming along nicely and very, very excited. These are our pasture piglies that are going to be going out in the pasture right away here. I had a training pen set up in here for them. Um, and I had one outside as well. And then I had built a little one over there. But I quickly reminded myself why I hate that stupid poly wire stuff. Because it does not stay hot if it touches anything. Any blade of grass, whatever. It does not stay hot. So... Yeah, they quickly ran through that. It took me forever to build that stinking little pen, so I have to take that down. Probably set up their training pen in here again. Maybe I'll do that today. And then I will put them in there for a couple more days in the training pen, and then hopefully I can go around the big pasture and make sure everything's set up and all the wires and posts are good, and then we can put them out on pasture. We've also been hatching out Quite a few baby chicks. I'm really happy with how everything's going with that, except for my humidity kit thing that came with my incubator kind of malfunctioned at the end of my last hatch and resulted in a little bit of a lower hatch rate. But I've been hatching out lots of babies. We've kept a few and sold a few, and yeah. So we've got lots of new chickens coming up and the main flock has been busy free ranging so that's exciting i'll go show you guys the chicks i guess maybe you want to see baby chicks who wouldn't right all right so these are kind of our youngest ones so far they just got taken off the heat and put in the main pen with the other teenagers and then we've got some really cool looking chickens coming up in this batch i see a few roosters so figure out what we're gonna do with those guys but yeah these are our teenagers our little juveniles and they're pretty cool so they're doing really well we haven't lost any of those got some funky cool colors in there so these guys should all be like olive eggers easter eggers lay green eggs brown eggs stuff like that if you're not familiar with where we live we live in northern alberta we live about an hour north of grand prairie alberta and the wildfire situation around us has been pretty terrible. I actually went down with my mom and my daughter. We went down to Hannah, which is kind of by Calgary, Drumheller area, somewhere around there. Anyways, we went and visited my auntie's ranch down there. She's got a great big farm, lots of cows, and lots of land. Anyways, it was kind of horrendous coming back from that trip because of the wildfire situation. A lot of the roads were closed and our phones were just emergency alert emergency alert constantly so we had to make a lot of detours and different routes to get home and that was terrible meanwhile the entire time my husband was fighting a pretty decent sized fire by us so I was kind of in a rush to get back home you know just in case we had to evacuate god forbid so that was not fun but so far we are safe and we don't have any fires close to us threatening us currently. Um, there's one about an hour north of us that's really big. And if it continues to get bigger, then I would imagine my husband's department will be called in for mutual aid. But so far, they're trying to limit having to do that just in case our department needs um, to be used in our area. So, yeah. Um, on that note pray for rain please we need rain it is so dry here this is like year three of drought but this year we've gotten pretty much next to nothing in result in uh, regards to rain no precipitation here at all it's been so so dry and it, it's like a tinder box it doesn't take much to light it up so yeah pray for rain and pray for the firefighters and all the farmers and everybody that's helping put out these fires around our province it's been just awful all right, next thing on our list of projects that we've currently done is we've got our garden tilled up thanks to one of our awesome neighbors. And we got it all planted yesterday. My husband, of course, helped me and he had to do it on night shift, which I always feel bad for him that he has to do that because he doesn't get enough sleep. 
but we got the garden pretty much in. I just got a couple more rows of carrots that I need to plant. And this is our main garden spot. It's fairly large. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna put this year, I'm gonna put some stuff for the peas to climb on. So I will try to remember what we planted here. <laughs> this row, this long row is peas. This half a row is peas, this half a row is peas. Um, carrots over there, and then three rows of beans over there. Um, I believe we have some lettuce, different lettuces here, some spinach, and what else do we have here? Uh, we got potatoes back there, and we planted some corn over there that I started in the house. Got a few things going on here and then we have another garden spot that I'm going to plant as well so that's going to be that's mostly for my perennials but I have an open spot that I'm going to put my zucchinis and pumpkins and cauliflower in but yeah it's always a big project because our garden spot is is not small it's pretty large yeah hi you're such a big suck you this is Owl. We have his brother Hoot. Hoot and Owl. We got them from a uh, college that teaches animal health tech program. So they were their lab rat cats. They got to be poked and prodded and all the students practice doing their stuff, procedures on them. So they're actually very, very friendly and they're not very good outside cats because they don't think they do any hunting and they're very spoiled. At the end of last month, we also took all of our horses to the vet. They got their teeth floated, the mares got their wolf teeth pulled out a little later than they should have been pulled out, but they're out. They all got their vaccinations, they've all been dewormed. Um, and then my one mare, Hazel, my halflinger mare, my oldest one, she got her Coggins pulled, which basically just checks to make sure that she's negative for equine infectious anemia. And she is, she's negative. Um, I got a mineral panel pulled on them because they chew my fences like you wouldn't believe. Anything wood in the pastures, they just go crazy on. I don't know if it's a mineral deficiency or what the problem is. I'm kind of leaning towards it's just a bad habit. But anyways, so that was done. I'm planning to breed Hazel this year. So hopefully next month she will go um, be hauled to the stallion that we're breeding her to and hopefully that all works out because so far our breeding plans with all of our animals have been a little bit not great <laughs> and I guess on that note too for our Jersey cow um, we looked into doing AI we looked into sex semen we've looked into all that kind of stuff um, nobody really has dairy bulls around us and if they do they're not willing to rent them out which is fine because I totally understand from a biosecurity standpoint why someone would want to do that so that is okay um but we've decided that for this year because of all the stuff we've got going on it's just going to be a lot easier for us and a little less expensive um so we've decided to just breed her to the neighbor's bull so hopefully we will be sending her off uh later next month as well to get bred and we're going to breed her to a speckle park so yeah hopefully that all works out and last but not least i wanted to show you guys our dugout i know in the states they call them like a pond or something but where we live it's called a dugout so we're very happy that we have this dugout this year because it's been a long time coming um our neighbor came and dug it for us last fall it's a fair size. I don't remember exactly what it is. I think it's like an 80 by 60 or 80 by 40 or something like that. I don't know. But it holds a lot of water. It's very, very deep. And we're excited because we weren't sure if it was going to hold water. And so far, it looks like it is. And we were lucky enough that it filled off, filled up from the spring runoff. Because I know a lot of other people have had issues this year with not having their dugouts fill up because we just didn't have a lot of snow that melted to fill up dugouts. But 
we're happy to have that because now we're going to be getting a water pump and then we can water the garden with this and we can fill up troughs and stuff from the dugout. We don't have to haul water because hauling water is a super, super big inconvenience and watering the garden, especially in a drought year, takes a lot of water. Watering the animals in a drought year also takes a lot of water. We have an in-milk dairy cow. Ow, freaking cat. Anyways, we have an in-milk dairy cow, so she's drinking a lot of water and cows and horses just drink a lot of water in general. So that's gonna be nice. We have this massive, massive pile of dirt that we have to figure out what we're doing with. Um, I think part of it is mostly clay. So I think part of it is gonna be used for the foundation for our shop in the future. I don't think we're building a shop this year. Maybe next year, we'll see. So that we gotta do that. Um, and then another project that we're gonna do, we have not started on yet, but we are going to be doing this year is, we are gonna be running water lines throughout the entire property and putting hydrants in different places and hopefully some automatic waters in the pasture. So that's gonna be awesome. And we'll definitely make our systems way more efficient and way less labor intensive because we are still hauling water either from the hose in the summertime or directly from the house in the winter. So it's not been ideal. Yeah, so that is the update of what's been going on at Burnt River Ranch. Thank you guys for watching and take care. I will keep you guys updated with our next video.